Hello and welcome to Aftershoot, a revolutionary system to speed up your workflow. In today's video, we're gonna go over our preferences screen. We've made quite a few changes here and we've also implemented some new magical unicorns. So we wanna just give you a quick guide to them before you get started. First things first, you're gonna notice we now added genres to the culls. So you're able to specify what type of shoot this is and what it does is actually implement some different models to really tailor that culling experience for that genre of photography. What it's also going to do is prevent your learning from a boudoir session to influence your wedding and engagement learning. What this means is that if you prefer closed eyes in a boudoir session, but you always want open eyes in your wedding portraits, they won't intermix, so we won't consider closed eyes as much based on your boudoir selections because you now have your own boudoir profile and your own wedding profile. Next up, we're gonna go over the threshold for culling of blurred photos. This is a significant change in this latest update. And what you're gonna notice is that everything got quite a bit stricter. So if you used to set your blur threshold to strict, we're gonna recommend that you dial it down one step to moderate. The main reason being is that strict has become quite strict for headshot photography and other types of shoots where you need the most sharp images and you are controlling your settings and your scene. This means that if you are shooting at high ISO, we may still mark them as blurred under strict, whereas we would not do so in moderate. The main reason being is because the images tend to look a little bit softer when you have more grain or noise or they're underexposed. So strict has now become designated for that headshot photographer who's shooting at a lower ISO or a higher aperture and really needs the sharpest of the sharp. Moderate is what used to be strict. Again, this is still quite a strict condition, whereas we will consider some of the higher ISO, but we won't consider extremely noisy images because we do believe that they are still soft. And the lowest tier is lenient. Lenient has now been adjusted to incorporate many different types of images, such as high ISO, underexposed, and softer focus, and it's similar to what Lenient used to be. Again, these are significant changes that you'll experience in your blur settings. We highly recommend to play around a little bit and figure out what exactly fits your shooting style under these new magical unicorns. Next up, you're gonna notice the criteria for grouping duplicates. We've changed the names here. You may remember loose as extreme. You may remember similar-ish as strict, similar as moderate, and identical as lenient. We've changed the wording to help better understand how these new systems work. So identical essentially means that the images have to be exact duplicates of each other for them to be clustered together. This means that you're gonna end up with a lot more sets of images to review you'll have more selections out of each set, whereas running it on similar-ish would be comparable to what strict used to be. While the algorithm has changed significantly, we've also added some very important fail-safes to prevent you getting images clustered together that should not be clustered together. You may notice you will see some more singular one-off images in this new algorithm, but we've eliminated the issue where different people were clustered together in the same duplicate sets among group shots. Next up is the selections in each duplicate set. This remains the same as it used to be, so it's simply a percentage of the images out of each duplicate set. So if you had a grand total of 10 images in a duplicate set, less would give you one out of 10, moderate would give you two out of the 10, and more would give you three out of the 10. One change we did make here is that we try and look for different images out of each set now. Whereas before you may see that if you had two images out of 10 selected, they were just two very similar images. And we've changed the algorithm to try and pick two different images out of that set. So we look for the images that have the most drastic differences in emotion. So that gives us the ability to potentially pull a smiling at the camera and a looking off camera straight face image if they're clustered together. Another significant update is our highlights feature. We've created a brand new algorithm to look at the best of the best and try and pull out those images from your selected images. What this means is that your highlight images will now be the absolute best images available to you. 
We look for the highest emotion, the best sharpness, and pull those images out as your highlights. Now this is also a really cool feature because what this allows you to do is actually set it to be a percentage of your selected images. And some photographers are actually using this as a way to just really narrow down to the top 25% of the images and they'll simply add other parts of the day or parts of the shoot to their highlights and end up with a much smaller number. It's a way to cull in to your favorite images using Aftershoot's AI to pull out the absolute most desirable images. As always, you're able to enable and disable any of these filters so you can turn off your closed eyes, your blur, or your duplicates. Some of our categories automatically will do this for you. For instance, our newborn genre will allow you to turn off the closed eye images automatically, but you can turn them right back on in that newborn setting. Once you've got all your settings dialed in, you can go ahead and click on Start Culling and get that valuable time back. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to watch some of our other videos on what Aftershoot can do for you.